In this demo, we're going to configure Quality of Service, or QoS. QoS is the technology that manages data traffic to help reduce packet loss, prevent latency, and minimize jitter on the network. With QoS, we can control and manage network resources by setting priorities for specific types of data on our network. Before we get started, be aware that PFSense refers to quality of service as traffic shaping, so I might use either term in the demo, but I'm talking about the same thing. From our PFSense dashboard, we want to go up to Firewall, Traffic Shaper, and we'll select the wizard. Here we have two choices, multiple LAN slash WAN and dedicated link. I'm going to choose dedicated link. It says to enter the number of WAN connections. I only have one and it's already set to the number one, so I'll just leave it. Click Next. I want to configure traffic shaping on our guest Wi-Fi for this demo. Under Local Interface, I can pick the correct interface from the drop-down menu. On the next drop-down, which is also called Local Interface, we have three options. To cover what each of those do in detail would take more time than we have in this demo, but I'll try to sum it up. The first choice, PriQ, or Priority Queuing, is the easiest to configure and the easiest to explain, so let's start there. PriQ does traffic shaping by priority. Let's say we have high priority, default priority, and low priority. The high priority always gets to go first no matter what. Pretend that our packets are lined up into three lines, one for each level of priority. The high priority line goes first, but just as it gets down to the last packet, here comes a bunch more. Before the other two lines get to go, all the high priority traffic gets to keep going. Finally, the line for high priority is empty, and the default line gets to go. But after a handful of packets go, here come more high priority packets. This can be constant, and in the low priority line, they never get to go. This is called starvation. So you can see why PriQ might not be the best choice. Now let's talk about CBQ, or class-based queuing, because it's a little like PriQ except that each line is assigned some bandwidth. So in this case, we might say we'll allow 10 packets from the high priority line to go, five from the default line, and then one from the low priority line. This prevents starvation of the lower priority traffic. Finally, HFSC, or Hierarchical Fair Service Curve, also allows all priorities to have a chance to pass through. You have the ability to tweak HFSC's performance, but it can be very complicated to set up. So for this demo, we're going to keep it simple and go with PriQ. Let's move this demo along now. We're going to choose WAN for the WAN interface and once again, choose PriQ. For the upload, we're going to choose four megabits per second. And for our download, we'll do 50 megabits per second. Click Next. This takes us to the VoiceOver IP page. Normally, by default, this box is not checked. I'm going to uncheck it because I'm not going to prioritize VoIP. This is a guest Wi-Fi and I don't think this traffic will be on that segment of my network. Click Next. If you have one or more hosts on your network that are using too much bandwidth, you can place them in a penalty box that will lower the priority of the traffic from their IP. If you need to list more than one host, you'll need to create an alias. When you put the host in the penalty box, that lowers the priority of their traffic from an IP or alias. If you have just one user, you just enter their IP address in here. If you have more than one, you create an alias and group those IPs together. Let's look at that for a minute. I have this other tab open. I go to aliases by going to firewall aliases. From here, you fill in the name and give it a description and type. This is where you would start to put in the IP addresses of the hosts that you want in the penalty box. Click add host to keep putting in IPs. All right, let's go back to our traffic shaper page and click next. Now we have the peer to peer network dialog. Checking this box lowers the priority of peer-to-peer -peer networking. Right below this is an interesting option, P2P Catch-All or Peer-to-Peer Catch-All. If I check this box to enable it, the system will consider all traffic it can't identify as peer-to-peer. -peer. This might sound good, but if you suddenly have a new type of good traffic and PFSense doesn't know what it is, it'll become low priority and that might be bad. I don't like using this option for that reason. We already lowered peer-to-peer -peer above. We could check all of these, but for the sake of time, I'll just enable BitTorrent here, scroll down, and click on Next. 
Our next page is Network Games. Enabling this gives your games a higher priority than most traffic. You would then select the games you want. I'm just going to scroll down and click Next. Now we can decide if we want to raise or lower other applications. By default, this is not checked, so I'll go ahead and check it. It says, this will help raise or lower the priority of other protocols higher than most traffic. So for example, for remote desktop protocol, I might want to have a higher priority. It's already set to that, so I'm good. I know this is my guest Wi-Fi network, but if it was my LAN, that's what I would want. I set the others to a low priority previously. Here, I have a variety of messengers that I can adjust. For my VPN, I might want to give my IPsec a high priority. I might use my VPN a lot and really depend on it, so I want it to have the highest priority. For multimedia and streaming, we have RTSP, or Real-Time Streaming Protocol. This is used for streaming video, such as from media servers or even IP cameras. You might want that to have high priority. Real-Time Messaging Protocol is a protocol owned by Adobe for real-time streaming of video, audio, and data between a server and Flash player. Even though Flash is going away, the protocol is still popular. Here, our regular HTTP traffic is set to default priority. I'll just leave the rest of these alone and click Next. On the next page, we have our Finish button. When you click Finish, PFSense makes rules for all the things we selected in the wizard, and this might take several minutes. I'll click Finish, and now I'll pause the demo until the page refreshes. All right, all the rules are created, and it's brought me to this page. You can see that it created a hierarchical view for my traffic shaper. What it actually created are firewall rules, so let's look at those now. Go to Firewall, Rules, and then go to the Floating tab. You can see all these rules that were created for us. Now, let's say we want to change one of the rules. For example, perhaps we use Remote Desktop Protocol, but use a custom port number instead of the default 3389. We can edit the rule here. I'll scroll down, and I could change the port. I would then scroll down to the bottom of the page, and save the settings. That's it for this demo. We configured quality of service or traffic shaping on our guest Wi-Fi network.